I'm uh, getting ready for our next video. Um, at least I think it'll be our next video. Leaving off where we wedged down the uh, big white spruce of the last video. Yep. Uh, the one that was hung up with the cedar. Uh, this will be a fresh takedown of one more white spruce in that area. Uh, and that'll probably be it. That'll be it? Well, it'll be it for that particular area and knocking out white ah, spruce. Okay. Sounded like you were retiring. Well, maybe. <laughs> Certainly old enough. Because uh, what I try and do is manage like a small area and it's kind of experimental, see what happens. So I don't go through uh, acres and do the same thing. I tend to concentrate in small patches, especially where I know we have some regeneration that's working. So we'll talk a bit more, uh, maybe in this video, on that with a little bit of a, a tour. But yeah, uh, it, it wouldn't do to run out of fuel in the, in the middle of a tree takedown, <laughs> although that's quite often what would happen to <laughs> It me. does happen. <laughs> No, actually, I'm not too bad. Uh, it's better, certainly, for your saws to not run them empty. Uh, eh, we probably should give a little touch-up filing. How often do you do that? Uh, Whenever I think, I like to give them a small sharpening regularly, every tank, every couple of tanks of gas, rather than let them get all dull, dull, and then have to file away for half an hour or whatever to get them back. So Sort of like kitchen knives, just give them a couple yes. of strokes and a nice sharpener each time you use them. That would be a good approximation, yes. Now mind you, this is not anything that I consider fun. Like this is just <laughs> what you got to do in order to... In order to have your tools working properly. <laughs> yes. So I do it about as quick and easy a way as I can manage. I don't feel compelled to have the sharpest chainsaw in all of New Brunswick or Atlanta, Canada or whatever. <laughs> as long as it goes through the wood at a decent speed and I can see the chips are a decent size. You're a that, happy camper. That <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> There's two things that I try and concentrate on in terms of restoring the woodlot. Uh, when I can find it, for instance, in here there are three red oak that we're protecting with our branch on, piles. Under all this brush stuff. Uh, so, to, they were still too shaded. Uh, red oak will grow with in quite dense shade when it's little. But within a couple of years, it needs to get more sunlight because it's only, as a mature tree, it's only what's called moderately tolerant uh, or intermediate tolerance. So, so let's start at the beginning. Several years ago, this white spruce, I cut out to allow some sunlight in here. Lo and behold, because I have no control over this, <laughs> we got three, and actually there's another one over here, four red oak seedlings. And so this tree cutting allowed these seedlings to start. But I'm old enough that I have no idea how long I will be able to tend and take care of these critters. So I wanted to make sure that they were 
fairly well set up for at least a number of years. So in here, this is a red maple. Uh, probably a red maple. Probably right there, about <laughs> 16 inches in diameter, although it's a bit differently shaped. And he was a, a bit of a wolf tree. He had branches stuck way out. Uh, there's a branch over there. The tip of it is probably 40 feet. And this was now providing considerable shade on uh, these seedlings that I really wanted to get a good start. So that's when this process happened. The uh, spruce looks like he was ready to fall down anyway. Oh, he was dead. I mean, he, <laughs> I, I, I did not actually, although I did make a cut to make sure he wasn't, uh, he was totally, more to control he was where totally he went. severed. He, he was being hung strictly in the multi branches of this red uh, maple. So now, uh, with this cut, these trees should be good for, um, I would like to say for 300 years, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I would have to see them. In 50 years time? <laughs> well, no. Uh, when they're up around 20 feet and see how their crowns are developing and so on, that would give me an idea if they're getting enough sunlight or not. So you'll be back in how many years to do that? <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> I probably, I'm not going to be back in 20 years. You're not going to commit to that? <laughs> no. Uh, My so, grandfather was still working at 92. <laughs> yeah, well. Maybe you will be. Maybe, maybe. Uh, so that's the kind of thing we do. And, and this is only on a on a small scale this this little plot here wouldn't be a quarter of an acre right so we're not going through the woodlot doing huge projects we're going through and finding opportunities where we think we can make improvements by doing obviously you have to start with cutting or planting uh, you prefer cutting well, the thing is, if, if, if you don't have any openings in enough sunlight, planting isn't any good to plant a, a, a new seedling in the dark, right? Uh, you're just wasting your time. So whether you're freeing up uh, regeneration that came naturally, and that, to my mind, is the best way. Uh, or you're simply making open spaces for the regeneration to happen. Yes, and that's what we'll be do finishing off next, is that small section of uh, alders and mostly alders and white spruce, well, along with the white ash, is... Uh, take out a few more of those white spruce. Demoing and... what it's like to take down a white spruce if you haven't had the pleasure or unpleasure of doing it. <laughs> So that will be heading uphill and to the north, but you'll see a lot of what's been done over the last little bit to open this whole area up. Yeah, so I've thinned out some of the red spruce, or red maple rather, because they were growing quite thickly together. And again, can I get some sunlight down there and see if I can get some more oak and regeneration? see what else comes up. Yeah. So this is the stump of the tree that we cut last time and the one slated for removal today is the one that I was tucked behind during the video to ensure that the uh, guy coming down didn't take me out too. Okay, so this white spruce uh, is what I call a two chainsaw tree. <laughs> Uh, my my big guy will be for the felling, but before you can fell these, you first have to cut your way into these trees in order to be able to properly fell it, fall it, uh, because 
if you just try and go in there, you're going to have a branch poke your eyes out. You're going to have, be bleeding in numerous places. This is just nasty, nasty stuff. Well, I so, see they got a lot of dead branches all down here at the bottom. Yeah. So the first thing we have to do is rectify this situation, which is a small saw because the amount of moving that you need to do, this becomes a much easier proposition. Instead of the heavy one. Right. So we now have some visibility to look around and see where I actually want to fall this fella. And of course, a certain amount of cleanup needs to happen so it's not a tripping hazard. And, yes, break your ankle hazard. thinking I'd like them to go right between. I think he's this uh, white ash. There's a little white ash there. Uh, it's going to get brushed a bit. The alternative is to, that looks to fell him just down through all those alders. Put him down somewhere right about there, I think. So you want to fell them uphill, not downhill? Does that matter? Not to the tree? No? What's, what's more important is whether he's weighted on one side or another. Ah, he looks pretty even from here. Well, usually these fields spruce. They're growing in all directions. They're fat so, all over. So they tend to be fairly well balanced. But uh, really, you'd have to walk a long ways to really do any kind of serious assessment on this fella. Uh, anyhow, we'll give her a try. Oh, big saw time. Switch saws. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. 
Okay, first wedge is going in. He's not going to take too much more, I doubt. I think he's fairly close. I can see him move a little bit with each whack. There you go. There you go. Look at all that sunlight. <laughs> right, that's what we want. <laughs> sunlight, yes. Look at the size of the stump on that guy. Well, uh, all told, we've got four trees down in what's probably less than, oh, about a quarter acre or so. Uh, and that's it. Wait a few years, come back in, look and see what's going on. Uh, Maybe if we, uh, in the springtime, had some uh, white pine seedlings, maybe come in here and plant some white and pine. stick a few of them in. Uh, to replace the white spruce. Well, and we sometimes, uh, one of the mature oaks has seedlings, so might be able to transplant a couple of them too. We may get some, some oak coming in. Yeah. But basically, it's... Uh, you take out the white spruce and the white ash, and it's pretty much an alder patch. And there's not much else in here. <laughs> no, well, there's one there's nice a cedar, cedar there. there. Yeah. And uh, actually, there's another. And there's an occasional small maple coming up. Yeah. Yeah. But not a lot of variety. Nope, for sure. Anyhow, thanks for joining us. Uh, see you on the next video, and stay safe. See you next time, guys. <laughs>